What's up, YouTube? Ryan back today with the Week 11 Minor League Recap. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Another great week in the minor leagues. I am going to say it right now. This week was the best offensive week so far in the minor league season. There was so many awesome performances. It felt like, honestly, every single person I looked up, I think I went through like 63 players this week, felt like half of them had 1,000 OPS or higher. Like It was ridiculous. So some players did not make the cut this week. Basically, what I did was pretty much I looked at the batting average on base percentage, the slugging percentage, the OPS, and what they did offensively throughout the week. If they had 1,000 OPS, but they hit like 230 because they just hit a bunch of home runs, didn't really make the cut this week. Um, so I did have to cut a few people out because we have a ton of players to get through. So I'm going to jump into this video pretty quick here, but an awesome offensive week. Cannot wait to jump into it. Let's start off with our first player and only player we're going to talk about at rookie ball. All right, Jordan Lawler is going to be our first player at rookie ball and the only player we talk about at rookie ball this week. So Jordan Lawler, everyone knows, killed it at low A this year so far. Like unbelievable, probably the best performer at low A this season. He got hurt. Unfortunately, he has like a bone growth on his rib. Went back to Phoenix, got it evaluated. They said pretty much it's benign and he can play play with it. So they threw him back in rookie ball for a couple games, and this is what he did this week. Over four games at rookie ball, 539 batting average, 647 on base percentage, 1416 OPS. He had a triple, a double, seven hits in four games. He walked three times on top of that, got beamed once. Just, just an animal, honestly. This dude, I mean, coming off of an injury, not playing for like two weeks, three weeks, just ridiculous numbers. He's so good. He is so special. So excited for Jordan Lawler. Jumping straight into low A. I did want to throw this one in there. Heston Kierstad, he was the second overall pick back in 2020. He officially made his MLB debut um, this week over four games. 357 batting average, 438 on base percentage, 938 OPS. Again, not an insane week. He did have two doubles, five hits in four games, two walks on top of that. But I just want to throw it out there that he is playing. A lot of people forgot about him because he has taken this long to make his MLB debut. But he's back. He's playing. And honestly, for not playing in that long, that's a good week. Next up, Max Muncy for the Athletics. Over five games this week, 316 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 974 OPS. He had a home run, six hits in five games. He walked six times and got beamed once. That's why I had him on here. Um, you know, obviously not 1,000 OPS this week. And hitting 316 over a week is not crazy. But a 500 on base percentage is huge for him because that is where he has struggled this year. Walking six times and then getting that additional hit by pitch. Love seeing him get on base seven times this week without having to swing the bat. All right, jumping into our videos, and there is a lot of them this week. Blaze Jordan kicking us off here with the first home run of the week. Blaze Jordan this week over six games, 440 batting average, 462 on base percentage, 1142 OPS. He had a home run, a triple, a double, 11 hits in six games. Only walked one time, but he did steal a base as well. Just an incredible week. You don't really need a walk when you're hitting 450. So, yeah, killed it. Next up, Hedbert Perez. This kid has a special type of power. He absolutely can crush baseballs. Wow. Hedbert Perez this week, he's just turned 19, just has crazy pop in that bat. Over five games, 278 batting average, but he did have a 350 on base percentage, 1183 OPS because he did have three home runs, a double, five hits in five games. Four of his five hits were extra base hits, and that's why his slugging percentage was 833 this week. He walked twice on top of that and stole a base. Fun talent with Hedbert Perez. I am still waiting for him to be more consistent, but he's young. He's barely 19. Next up. Jose Salas makes his first recap of the year, just destroys this ball. Jose Salas this week over five games, 467 batting average, 550 on base percentage, 1283 OPS. He's a home run, a double, seven hits in five games. He walked three times on top of that, got beamed once, stole two bases. Jose Salas is an awesome talent. Again, another player who just turned 19. He like, literally just turned 19. Absolutely love Jose Salas. That Marlins system has a lot of young talent. Pretty exciting. Next up, Kevin Alcantara stays hot. This dude has been finding his in-game power, and it has been just impressive. Kevin Alcantara this week over six games, 391 batting average, 417 on base percentage, 1330 OPS, hit three home runs, a triple, a double, nine hits in six games. Only walked one time, but when you're hitting 400, it's not as big of a deal. Just absolutely killed it this week. Love seeing the three home runs. But on top of that, he had a triple and a double. Kevin Alcantara is a special young player, still only 19 years old, about to turn 20. 
got some talent. And our MVP in low A this week, and I love this because his his debut on the recaps this year, Harry Ford, game tying home run here. Harry Ford has struggled this year, like struggled, like barely hitting 200, struggled. But over the last couple weeks, he's been picking it up, and this week was the best of the bunch, and this one was incredible. Over five games this week, 524 batting average, 600 on base percentage, 1143 slugging, he had a 1743 OPS. And before I go through the rest of this, let's remind you all, he's a catcher. He had two home runs, three triples, a double, 11 hits in five games, walked four times on top of that, stole a base. Harry Ford, finally. I've been waiting for this. I thought he'd have a lot hotter start to the season. He was a 12th overall pick in 2021. Crazy bat speed, awesome athlete behind the plate. And this week he showed it. Definitely deserves MVP in low A. Moving into high A, Zach Veen is getting hot. He's starting to show that power that he showed last year. Zach Veen is incredible. This week over six games, Zach Veen had a 273 batting average, 360 on base percentage, 1042 OPS, Again, not a crazy week, but a very solid week. But he did have three home runs, six hits in six games. He walked three times on top of that and stole four bases. All right, this is a fun one. Luis Torabio. good Lord, did he kill that baseball. Luis Torabio making his debut on the recap this week as well. Over six games this week, 273 batting average, but a 407 on base percentage, 1089 OPS. He also had three home runs. He had six hits in six games. He walked five times on top of that. This was a player who's in 2021 Bowman last year and honestly looking kind of promising. Next player up, Matthew Lugo, second rounder back in 2019 for the Boston Red Sox. Over five games, 400 batting average, 400 on base percentage, so he didn't walk, but he had a 1,200 OPS. He had three home runs, a double, 10 hits in five games, five RBIs on top of that. Matthew Lugo is low-key, everyone. He's having a really solid season this year. He's only 21, just turned 21, still young. Someone to look out for. Next player up, Colton Kowser. Just lines this ball to right center. This is the Colton Kowser I've been expecting. Kowser's been struggling a little bit this year. Just turned 22 90 days ago. Over five games this week, 400 batting average, 478 on base percentage, 1278 OPS. He had two home runs, two doubles, eight hits in five games, but he walked three times and stole three bases. Next up, and I've been waiting for this guy to show out, Everson Pereira making his 2022 recap debut seems like he was on almost every single one last year but finally makes it on for 2022 over six games this week 385 batting average 429 on base percentage 1313 ops he had four home runs a double 10 hits in six games 12 rbis he walked twice had a stolen base everson Pereira is a very special talent again i'm shocked it took this long 11 weeks for him to get on a recap but hopefully he's got it figured out now Next up, Bobby Barrels, a.k.a. Robert Hassel, just absolutely clobbers this home run. This might have been the farthest home run he's hit in his entire career. I have nothing to back that up on, but I'm just going to assume. Robert Hassel this week over six games, 360 batting average, 429 on base percentage, 1309 OPS. He had two home runs, a triple, five doubles, nine hits in six games. He had eight RBIs, walked three times, stole two bases, Bobby Barrels, he's he been using the barrel pretty well this week. Awesome performance. Next up, Vaughn Grissom, and this dude has been on absolute tear. I'll show you the, his game log, actually. This week, he had, he had one for four. He went three for four, three for five, four for seven, four for five. So four games in a row, he had three or more hits. Equaling out to a 517 batting average, 563 on base percentage, 1425 OPS. He had two home runs, four doubles, 15 hits in six games, 14 RBIs this week. Absolutely insane in that category. On top of that, he had three walks and stole two bases. He only struck out four times too, which I think is very impressive over 32 plate appearances. But I love Von Grissom. This is one of my favorite prospects because he's 11th rounder back in 2019. This dude is absolutely balling. And our MVP at high A is going to be Ellie De La Cruz. This player just keeps surprising me, honestly. He keeps on getting better and better every single week. That's like an O'Neal Cruz type home run there. How, how did that get out? Over six games this week, 455 batting average, 556 on base percentage, 1465 OPS. He had two home runs, a triple, two doubles, 10 hits in six games, walked five times, which I absolutely love. But I'm only bone to pick with Ellie De La Cruz the last two seasons is literally that he just doesn't take enough walks. So absolutely love seeing that. And he stole three bases. Insane week, Ellie De La Cruz. Our first player up at double A's, Griffin Conine, 455, the center field here. He had 36 home runs last year, and he's starting to figure out his power. 
He only had a 235 batting average, but he did have an 1146 OPS because he had three home runs. Three of his four hits this week in five games were home runs, so that's why his OPS was over 1,100. Walked four times, one being intentional. Griffin Conine, you know, he's been busted for steroids. He was second rounder back in 2018. I don't know. He's got a lot of power. Francisco Alvarez continues to rake his 10th home run over his last 19 games. What? Francisco Alvarez over six games this week, 381 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 1262 OPS. He had two home runs, two doubles, eight hits in six games, six RBIs on top of that, five walks. The dude is just a special talent, still only 20 years old at double A. Man, he is on an absolute tear right now, which I am absolutely loving because started off hot, sucked for a while. Now he is just tearing it up. Good for you. Francisco Alvarez. Next up, Curtis Mead absolutely ropes this home run. This got out in a hurry. Curtis Mead this week over five games, 389 batting average, 450 on base percentage, 1283 OPS. He had two home runs, two doubles, seven hits in five games, walked twice on top of that, stole a base. Curtis Mead, this is a fun double A talent here. Very versatile infielder, can play literally every position. Um, not unless it is a shortstop, but I'm sure if he can play third, second, and first, he could probably figure it out at shortstop. But just a fun talent. He's had a really good year in double-A so far. Next up, and this is one of my guys, Jeremiah Jackson. His fourth home run in four straight games this week. Absolute laser beam. Jeremiah Jackson, second rounder back in 2018. Struggled last year. Like, really struggled. He's had some injury issues. So he did just come back here recently. But over six games this week, 318 batting average, 375 on base percentage, 1,000 slugging. 1375 OPS. He had four home runs, three doubles, seven hits in six games, 11 RBIs, two walks. He's had an awesome year so far. Super excited because this is someone I have liked for a while. Just crazy power. Four home runs this week. Absolutely love it. Next up, George Valera. And this dude absolutely crushes this baseball to left center. I'm not even sure where it landed. Just mashed. George Valera over six games this week, 400 batting average, 519 on base percentage, 1419 OPS. He had three home runs, a double, eight hits in six games. He walked six times on top of that. Just a really good talent. I'm not sure why the Guardians haven't brought him up yet, but he is hot. And my MVP this week at double A, no one other than Corbin Carroll. Watch how fast this dude is. I didn't put his home run on there this week because I thought this was more impressive. That wasn't even contested. Left center triple, and they didn't even have a chance to get him out? What? This is the same guy that had a 481-foot home run last week. Over five games, 450 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 1450 OPS. He had a home run, three triples, all in three consecutive games, by the way. He had a double, nine hits in five games, walked twice on top of that, got beaned once. Corbin Carroll, Diamondbacks, just stop it. He has over 1,100 OPS on the season. And they're still keeping him in double A. I don't really understand it. He's not getting any better where he's at now. Obviously, he's better than the competition at double A. Move him to triple A at a bare minimum, please. Like, bare minimum. I would love to see him in the pros at this point with what, what he's doing in double A. But put him in triple A, please. There's no reason for him to be in double A still. And jumping into triple A, Pedro Leon. The dude just kills home runs. Every single home run I've seen of this guys this year has just been mashed. Pedro Leon over five games this week, 333 batting average, 400 on base percentage, 10-11 OPS. He had a home run, two doubles, six hits in five games, walked once on top of that, got bean, stole four bases too, which is incredible. So love that. Next up, Mark Vientos. This guy's been on a tear. Similar to Francisco Alvarez, another Mets prospect who's just been on fire lately. Mark Vientos this week over six games, only hit 259, but he did have a 355 on base percentage and a 1096 OPS. He hit four home runs. That's why I made the video. He had a double, seven hits in six games, 11 RBIs, three walks, got beamed once. Mark Vientos is a fun prospect. Again, he's still only 22. I don't know why or how. I feel like he's like 25, but he's still only 22 years old. Definitely a strong talent in that Mets org. Next up, Michael Bush over six games, 375 batting average, 393 on base percentage, 1143 OPS. He had two home runs, three doubles, nine hits in six games, walked twice on top of that. Again, another player that's probably MLB ready, to be honest. And being a Dodger, it is tough to get up there right now because they have such a just insane team. But Michael Bush, he's looked good at double A. He's looking good at triple A. Do could play. Next up, CJ Abrams is finding his power, and he absolutely demolishes this baseball off of the scoreboard. 
in right center. What? C.J. Abrams this week over six games, 414 batting average, 433 on base percentage, 1123 OPS. He had two home runs, two doubles, 12 hits in six games, walked one time, but he stole four bases on top of that. C.J. Abrams is showing that he's back and ready for the MLB again. Just been crushing it in AAA, which makes me so happy because I love C.J. Abrams. One of my favorite prospects to root for. So happy for C.J. Abrams after struggling in the MLB. Next up, and probably the surprise of the season, Gunnar Henderson. He's at AAA now, and he continues to stay hot. At least for me, he's the surprise of the season. He has been someone who's been very streaky throughout his his pro career so far. And this year, he's pretty much figured it out. Former second rounder back in 2019, over six games, 364 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 1136 OPS. He had a home run, three doubles, eight hits in six games, walked six times and stole a base. Love it. Like the dude is having an awesome year. He's just about to turn 21 only. So, man, the Orioles, they stunk for a long time. But that organization is strong. They have some really strong prospects. I'm excited for their future. Next up, fun one for me, Peyton Burdick. He's one of my guys. I just I love his ability to get on base. Over six games, 278 batting average, but a 536 on base percentage, 1147 OPS. He has a home run, three doubles, five hits in six games only, but he walked eight times and stole a base, got beaned twice on top of that. Next up, and another breakout player this year, honestly, Asturi Ruiz. He's been awesome this year. Killed it in double A, then moved him up to triple A. And I think, yeah, all these games are from AAA. He's been on fire. He keeps going. Over five games this week, 450 batting average, 560 on base percentage, 1160 OPS. He had a home run, nine hits in five games, walked three times, stole six bases. Dude, Asturi Ruiz is on fire this year. He's actually been really solid in his pro career, except for last year, for whatever reason, was not very good at all. But he's back. He's hot. Another Padres prospect that is just good at baseball. Man, they're a scary organization. And our MVP at AAA, and this guy's just been killing it all year, Ella Harris Montero. Wow. Over five games this week, 471 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 1559 OPS. He has two home runs, a triple, two doubles, eight hits in five games. He walked once on top of that, stole a base. Sent like 330 this year in AAA. I'm not sure why he only has 13 at bats with the Rockies this year. It's crazy to me. Like, this guy is MLB ready. He should be playing every single day. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for the week 11 recap. Again, I cut out a lot of players and recording this right now. I'm 27 minutes into this recording still, and I probably cut out like 10 or 15 players. I'm not even going to lie. So many huge performers this week. So if there was someone you wish was on the video this week, please, between the dates of June 12th and June 18th, please put their name and stat line down below in the comments so both myself and whoever's watching can scroll down, check out who else balled out this week. But yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Happy Father's Day, everyone, and I hope you have a great week. See ya!